Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm Priscilla. I'm the owner of A Lifeful Simplicity. Today I'm really excited. I'm going to be a doing a book review based on the following book that was sent to me for review. It's called The Well of Truth, Spirit, uh, Stories of Spirit, rather. It's by Elizabeth Gould and it's published by Spark Press. Now, I would first like to thank FSB Associates, uh, the team at FSB Associates for reaching out, asking if I wanted to uh, receive this book for review. And I would like also to thank Elizabeth Gould herself because she's the one who sent this to me. And it made, man, it came from all the way from New Zealand. So <laughs> it had a journey, it had a journey. So. <laughs> I'm really happy. Uh, as you can see, I have a lot of little tabs and things. So fun. So I thought that I'd start by reading the um, book jacket or synops synopsis of the book uh, so you can understand what it is uh, this is about, this particular book is about. So in the back it says, incorporating elements of fantasy, mysticism, and lore, the Well of Truth follows a female heroine through poignant moments of her adult life. Through the initiations of marriage, raising children, getting divorced, going through menopause, losing loved ones, and ultimately making an independent life for herself, she gains insight and spiritual wisdom from unexpected places. These short stories are filled with reflections on feminine resilience, power, and agency. So, I was sent... Um, this particular like the backing and like all the uh notes that people have made uh, about the book itself i don't know if you can see but there you go and i um was very interested uh, so I, I accepted and said yes please feel free to send it to me for review and it had this beautiful note on the cover. I don't know if you can see. Beautiful note from Elizabeth herself. I love her handwriting. So nice, honestly. <laughs> so, yes. And it's a short read. So the book itself is only 133 pages. And that includes the glossary of deities at the back so without that it's 130 pages so it's a really really short book it's paperback which i absolutely love if you know me a nice good floppy paperback is where it's at don't get me wrong i have a few hardcover books but i really do prefer paperback they're easier on the wrists honestly my wrists always really hurt <laughs> from holding <laughs> really heavy books so before we get into the book, there is um, this really beautiful poem in the beginning um, that Elizabeth included that is by Kathleen Rain. So it's called Change. And I wanted to read it because I really, really, really loved it. So Change. Said the sun to the moon, you cannot stay. Change, says the moon to the waters, all is flowing. Change, says the fields to the grass, seed time and harvest, chafe and grain, you must change, said the worm to the bud, though not to a rose, petals fade, that wings may rise, born on the wind. You are changing, said death to the maiden, your wan face to memory to beauty, are you ready to change? Says the thought to the heart, to let her pass all your life long for the unknown, the unborn, in the alchemy of the world's dream. You will change, says the stars to the sun, says the night to the stars. So again, this poem was by Kathleen Rain, and I just thought that was absolutely beautiful. When I read that, I was just like, wow, it's very profound, and change is definitely a big thing, especially when... You're going from, you know, 
in your adult life, you're like hitting all these milestones that are very typical of life stages. If you've taken psychology and life uh, in terms of life stages, we talk a lot about that in psychology. So we go into a uh, table of contents here. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Hopefully it's clear. And there are, I believe, 24 short stories. Yeah. 24 uh, short stories. And they're all about the same main character. So they're all about... Um, the main character named Grace, uh, her name is Grace, and it's really just short stories of her going through her life. And while I don't mind a short story, one thing after I finished reading it was that I really wanted more. So I loved, I actually really love this book. I gave it uh, four stars. And the reason was because I really wanted more. <laughs> It's only 130 pages. So I would have loved if this was a novel instead and actually a series, like going through her life, but in a in a series if a no if one novel is like too short or something to go through everything. But I just loved it. And the premise of it really is like at each of her life stages, her particular life stages, a deity helps her through whatever she's going through, which I really, really enjoyed, um, specifically about the book. And I did tab quite a bit. So I did write, um, I have my, my little card here that I wrote information on, like who the main character is, uh, the names of her daughters, her ex-husband. When I started it, finished it, my star rating. And then on here is just my color system. Uh, that I have for the tabs that are here. So orange is like relatable moments. Pink is moments and quotes that I love. Blue is like a sad moment, something I consider sad. And then we have, you know, yellow, which I consider like interesting info or like important info. And then green, it would be uh, moments that irritated or angered me. <laughs> <laughs> which there were few in the beginning honestly um there are some really interesting things that I really enjoyed one thing that really got me that I found super duper sad was in the beginning when she was um it was the day of her wedding and on her wedding day, she was thinking, you know, why am I feeling so miserable on the happiest day of my life? Right there and then I was like, girl, you shouldn't even be marrying this guy. Like if you don't even feel happy on your wedding day, this, this, is, a, this is a no. <laughs> and a lot of the time people are just like, oh, you know, maybe it's just, you know, nervousness, pre-wedding jitters, things like that. But there's a difference between being nervous and being unhappy on your wedding day. Like, that was, like, a big thing. That was, like, a big red flag for me right there uh, when I was getting into it. And there was a few things. Like, some of the guidance... A lot of the pink moments are... Most of them are the guidance from the deities. Oh, so good. So beautiful. Like, this particular one, in the beginning, when, after she got married, they were at the after... Like, the reception, the after party. And the, um, the deity said to her, you know, as you begin this new phase of your life, remember to stay close to the trees and the flowers and the tides and the moon and the land around you. They will lead you back to your own true nature. The wisdom of your heart will guide you if you can learn to trust yourself. That way, you will never get lost. And I thought that was so beautiful and so true. You know, it's really about trusting yourself. Really about keeping true to like nature and things like that. And I absolutely, absolutely loved that uh, particular thing. There's also some inf interesting information that I didn't know, and I highlighted it in in yellow. Um, in regards to the blood moon, so she brought in here, the, um, though the so-called blood moon was spooky in both name and effect, she knew it was a phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering, 
which occurred when air molecules from the Earth's atmosphere scattered out most of the blue light so that the remaining light cast a red glow on the moon's surface. And I thought that was really interesting to bring interesting information in there. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really enjoy that. And then there was a moment here that I felt really related to myself, honestly. I, so it was literally here, it said, I dare you to take a risk and let yourself go. And at the time I was reading this, I was constantly getting readings for myself on like how I should take risks and how I should just, you know, just do things, you know, put yourself out there. <laughs> So I felt that was really relatable. So I highlighted an orange for myself because I was getting so much of that. And then to read that in this book, I was like, mm, it's a sign. It's a sign. It is a sign. Then there were some moments that I really enjoyed, especially like when she had, you know, she, she had children and there were some moments where things were tough for her, especially after she got divorced, you know, especially in the beginning before she got divorced, you know, she was constantly like doing her best to like, you know, make sure ends meet and that she could hold down the house and things like that. But she felt really alone and burned out a lot of the time because her husband was constantly away on business trips and things like that. And she just felt like she was very alone in everything, especially with uh, when she had her first child and then her second child. So when they had two children, they had two children, two daughters, and then, yeah, it was just... A lot of work on her and her husband was barely around um, so yeah that was I felt really sad to, to read that it was very sad to me then there was like one point that really got me is when her husband told her that you need to get a life and I was just like yo what you don't talk to your wife that way like she literally does everything in your house, takes care of your kids, and you treat her like that, you're not even home, like, I don't know, like, that really pissed me off <laughs> when I read that, so I tabbed it with green, and then also, like, um, when they, when she, when he said he wanted a divorce from her, it was because he was having an affair, and he loved the woman he was having an affair with, and he wanted to be with her, he wanted to marry her, and not be with Grace anymore. That also pissed me off as well. So, yeah. I really didn't like the the husband, the her ex-husband. I hated her ex-husband. <laughs> he was not the care. He was just not it. He was not it at all. But after her divorce, she met like um she met this really like really nice French guy. Um, and they were so sweet. There was a moment of them together. Um, he was showing her Paris. If I can find it. And I just loved what he said. Yeah, here. So he was, the, the scenario or the context was that they were at the, you know, in France, they have, um, they have a bridge with locks on it. That is in France, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Pont, Pont des Arts. So it's a bridge in France where they have locks on the Fran uh, on the on the on the bridge and it's supposed to signify a couple putting the lock, throwing away the key, and that signifies their love or whatever and Jean-Claude was saying, you know, these people don't understand what love is like the act of putting the lock and the key like they don't understand what love is and he said to love is to want the other to be free you cannot lock away love 
and throw away the key. And I absolutely loved that those two lines. I thought they were so beautiful and so true, you know, like love is not meant to be locked away. Like I understand people are like, oh, it's so cute. The fact that they're putting a lock and locking them and throwing in the key and all that good stuff. But he's right. You know, you can't do that. You're to be, have a good relationship and to love your partner is really to want freedom for them and for them to want freedom for you as well. So I love that so much. It was such a great line and I highlighted it because it needed, it needed it. It needed to be, it needed to be, um, it needed to be marked. <laughs> yeah. I also like this line. A friend of hers was telling her, um, as they say in France, l'amour est plus fort que la mort. Love is stronger than death. Which was nice as well. <clears throat> so yeah. And I think that was in relation to like her potentially liking Jean-Claude. Which was a friend of which was a friend of um, Caroline, which was a friend of hers. Uh, they 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 knew each other from years before, I think from school or something. And yeah, that's really like the main, like I have a lot more tab, but we're not going to give so many spoilers, right? So, so yeah, I love also that she included a glossary of deities in the back. Really fun. Um, so you can actually do more research on the deities that are mentioned or like the archetypes that are uh, mentioned throughout the book which I really really loved because then you can get more into deity work or learning more about different deities and things like that so that was really fun we have the the glossary here like that glossary hopefully you can see that so yeah I really love this book again I really wanted I wanted more <laughs> I really wanted more it was such a good book I would have to say that I was really I was thinking a lot about this and after I finished reading it and I was like you know what I think Anyone who is 30 and older should definitely read this book. I feel like it has so much good crone wisdom, <laughs> some good crone wisdom in here, uh, some like crone energy wisdom in terms of like the what the deities say that I feel like, like anyone, anyone should read this in my opinion, but I feel like people who have had a lot of life experience already, especially those who are 30 and older, would feel differently about this book after they've read it in my opinion because I'm 30 I'm gonna be 31 soon and I related a lot to specific moments in this particular book and I loved a lot of the guidance that the deity is provided uh, the main character Grace in this book throughout the different stages of her adulthood and the different things that happened in her life as well. So I really, really, really enjoyed, uh, enjoy that. And yeah, I just, I loved it so much. It was so good. <laughs> so thank you again, uh, Elizabeth, for sending this to me. Thank you again to FSB Associates for reaching out. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, that was the Well of Truth. I will link down below in my description box everywhere where this is available for purchase. I'll also leave down below Elizabeth's website as well as her Instagram. So you can go check out her website if you would like to learn more and check out her Instagram if you would like to give her a follow. I hope you do. I think uh, this book was fantastic and I think she deserves the love. So 
Yes. So again, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Turn on that bell so you can be notified every time I post a brand new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it's greatly appreciated. Thanks so much and I hope that you have a great day.